no offense to my other African countries. I'm sorry, but when this time I was speaking English up and down. Okay, if I stayed an extra one week. My account would have been on my nose. That's not where I'm coming from. Is there not this many people know? Hello friends, this is Jules of the Jules TV. Thank you for stopping by and you're welcome. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, we had a one-on-one -on -one talk. Um, I'm back to Ghana, obviously. Yeah. For those of you who have been following me for some time, you know I went to Nigeria. It was a very, very short trip. <laughs> for those of you thinking that I was never going to come back, or you were not sure when I was going to come back and all of that. Yeah, I'm back. I only spent one week. Just, just one week, okay? And I'm happy to be back. As at the time I'm filming this video, I've been back for about two weeks or thereabout. For those of you hmm, who legit actually put messages and said I shouldn't come back, I shouldn't bother, blah, blah, blah. Jokes on you, I'm back in the Accra. I am in the Accra in the Ghana, okay? I'm back, thank you so much. For all of you who, you know, sent nice, lovely messages thinking I wasn't going to come back anytime soon, thinking I was, like, going finally. Uh, thank you so much. Um, you meant a lot. Even people that hardly ever comment, I saw their comments and they're like, oh, when are you coming back, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm back, oh, it's... <laughs> It was a fun visit. Breezing, breeze out, but I'm back, thank God. Thank God for his kindness and genuineness. It's, it's, it was um, a breath of fresh air. Like, okay, don't take it the wrong way, but I mean, it was good to see my family, my friends. I didn't even see everybody. I mean, what could you possibly do in one week? How many people can you possibly see in one week? But anyway, I did the best I could, and yeah, I'm back. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the things I missed in Nigeria or I missed in Nigeria and I'm going to be talking about some little details here and there in comparison with Ghana, okay? The first thing obviously was food. I missed, I missed, or I missed, I still miss Nigerian food so much. I mean, the way I'm talking, you think, oh, I ate, oh, I ate plenty. It's not true. I couldn't really eat like I would have loved to. I ate mostly rice, mostly rice, really. And I don't know, I didn't eat as much as I was anticipating. In fact, it was so bad, I actually dropped a list of the things I needed to try. For some weird reason, the list just vanished from my phone. <laughs> I actually put in my notes. I couldn't find it. The only thing I remember thing that I wanted to try was coastal ice cream, which I did. And yeah, the rest, I enjoyed them at least, roadside foods here and there. I was happy to try them. Some restaurants that <sighs> I've been hoping to try. Cheap, affordable, but I mean, I've been longing for their food. I was so happy that some of them ha had branches around where I was staying. So I was so, so, so happy. Some of these things. I miss Nigerian grains, like the our big fat grains, <laughs> our rice, our fried rice, jollof rice. I missed it so much. I missed roasted plantain. I missed our kind of spaghetti. Please, you guys, tell me, oh, tell me. Maybe I'm the one not going to the right market. But I noticed that in Nigeria, right, we have spaghetti and we have what we popularly, you know, call pasta. We have spaghetti, then we have spaghetti. But what I usually find in Ghana is spaghetti. -ni. So spaghetti -ni is a lot thinner than spaghetti, okay? Spaghetti is fatter and, yeah, it's fatter. Spaghetti -ni is slimmer. So I noticed that that's what we have here in Ghana. Let me know if there's actually spaghetti, like the fatter ones. Because I've actually never seen the fatter ones here. So I miss that so much. I'm so happy to try the fat spaghetti. And, yeah, so many things. Like I said, I didn't try enough. It's still paining me, but <laughs> we move, we move. And I was so blessed enough to be able to bring some things back. I brought some honey beans. In fact, I was telling someone that this is the only part of this Nigerian beans that I don't miss is the picking. You will pick, 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 because there's a lot of dirt and stuff. I brought some of our swallow. I brought some of our ingredients, our fish, 
stockfish, what they call okoroko, brought some of our leaves, our pumpkin leaves. I brought so many things anyway. Well, not so many, but I don't think I brought the whole Nigeria. I just didn't. But I bought a few things that I, I know that I would like to eat once in a while. Some of Bono, some of our, our own Ebusi and all of that. So, of course, I had to bring these things back, you know, just to remind me of home and to keep my taste buds still connected to home, sort of, you get it. And of course, I get give bread. Ha! I get give bread. In fact, <laughs> I'm sure the video would have gone up before this one. Hey, things have become so expensive. Tiny I get give bread like this. I think I get give bread is just something that, I mean, everyone should try in a lifetime. Just saying. It's no longer as good as it used to be, in my opinion, but I get give bread is it's the real deal okay <laughs> then secondly i missed um our nigerian markets now the way well let's say lagos because i mean i went to lagos not the whole of nigeria now there's something about lagos markets it is um compact mentalized <laughs> i feel like a prof right now okay let me explain um the way the market is structured in, is in such a way that when you go to this part, if you want this particular thing, for instance, you want to buy wedding things, you're getting married, you want to get your wedding things and all of that, maybe your wedding dress, your hand fan, your shoes, your confetti and all of that, there's a particular place to go to. You're having a baby, you want to get some of your baby things, there's a particular place to go to. You want to do souvenirs, maybe wedding souvenirs, corporate gifts, there's a particular place to go to. You want to get imported underwears and all of that. There's a particular place to go to. You want to buy wristwatches, all kinds of wristwatches, swatch, um, Omega, all these things. There's a part. In fact, that one is a whole street of wristwatch sellers. Okay. You want to buy maybe some hammer, some little, little equipment for your house. There's a place to go to. You want to buy jeans clothes all these places there's a particular place they call mandilas you get all that there you want to get maybe traveling bags there's a place to go to fortunately or fortunately for me i'm privileged to know all these places right i mean i grew up going to the market a lot thanks to my mom that woman is real g so even till today i can still find my way around lagos island so there are places to get different things so you won't get confused or you won't get lost just ask somebody oh i want to get jeans they will direct in fact the jeans sellers would have started calling you from the beginning of the market and all of that so i miss that i miss where you can get your your ankara that's your um, fabric all those things there's a particular market for it all these the markets are connected though it's like one massive market with different compartments and all of that. I miss that a lot. That was something that I sort of didn't understand when I got to Ghana initially. I used to ask that, ah, well, are they compact? <laughs> are they compactmentalized markets? But I used to think that, oh, are they market specific things? And no one really gave me a specific answer like, oh, yes, they are. But I'm told, well, if you, if you know your way, you get things. I, at least I've been getting most of my things. If I go to Makola like this, everything I need basically, I'll get it in Makola. From facials to clothes to even food. There's a section for food to in Makola. So, I mean, that I miss in Nigeria. I mean, here yeah, we're talking about it in comparison with Ghana. So that's what I'm saying. I miss that so much. Um, I was able to go for a few market rounds. Ah, no more. Like I said, being in Ghana, eh? has sort of spoiled me a bit because i could still function in the rowdiness but at the same time i'm like ha ah, this is too rowdy <laughs> well i could function because i mean i I'd lived i've lived in lagos all my life i only went out of lagos to school so and i came back after schooling so i sort of got the vibe but still i'm like oh my goodness in ghana where i'm coming from is there not this many people oh <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's just my dream. I'm just being dramatic, but I miss going to the market, you know, the rowdiness sort of, and just 
that's the general chaos <laughs> to be honest hmm. then this one day it, it hits me hard because i'm like no one told me i just used to hear it on social media from my family my friends and all of that that well nigeria has become very expensive but i didn't know how bad it was until i landed by myself i went to see for myself things have become really really pricey because a lot of people were asking me oh are things expensive in ghana in comparison with um, nigeria and all of that and by the time i saw the way things were in nigeria uh, i said yes ghana is expensive but if you talk about now nigeria too is expensive so i just came to the conclusion that ghana is expensive for ghanaians nigeria is expensive for nigerians do you get it so yes ghana is still a bit pricey to be well let's just say accra let's not you know put the tag on the whole of ghana accra is quite pricey but with the way things are going with the way the world is going inflation here and there um rising the price of dollar and all of that lagos right now is not even smiling it's not even joking you see <laughs> i was saying that if i had spent extra one week right the amount of money i spent for that one week i was there if i had stayed an extra one week <laughs> my account would have been on my nose <laughs> It was that expensive, right? In fact, ticket fare, even traveling to Nigeria, I just cannot understand. It was just a lot of money. But well, thank God for provision, though. Things I used to know were like some 50 naira, some 100 naira, and now what's 200, 250. Bread, bread that I used to buy. There was this bakery around where I used to stay on the mainland right we used to buy bread for what i think the most expensive bread then was like 500 naira if i'm correct or was it 250 or 500 <laughs> y'all i'm hearing 900 in fact by the time i was leaving i was told the week i was leaving it was going to increase to 1000 like <laughs> y'all are joking with me right so bread is hot cake right now so if you know how to bake please be baking in your house so i mean but even though it's nice to patronize those who are baking you know who are companies but if you can't bake your bread i mean it's a bit cheaper and all of that so things are not as cheap as they used to be but i don't know about other parts of nigeria but i think everybody's singing the same song of how expensive things have become um i guess if i can live in ghana i can live anywhere i believe yeah i believe because um ghana is smiling a crap is smiling with no one okay <laughs> then yeah i was so happy to um speak my language i was so so excited but i noticed something that default setting i don't know maybe it's because i've been in ghana for this while I just realized i was speaking english up and down even at some point i had to call myself to order that what is all this english i'm speaking <laughs> you go to a place you clearly know that the person on i mean pigeon is more like our lingua franca and our unofficial lingua franca to be quite honest because everyone speaks pigeon right virtually everyone speaks pigeon so if you can't speak english next to speak is pigeon because we have various languages in nigeria so there's no how we can speak one language except english and pidgin english so i i found myself speaking english all the time and i'm like ah come 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 what's all this english you're speaking then i realized that oh in ghana there is english i speak for oh, most of the time with my small kakakakra tree <laughs> my small tree and um yeah i miss speaking pidgin english the nigerian pidgin I miss speaking Yoruba language. See, thank God for my mom. I mean, she each time we speak, she she somehow always almost always speaks Yoruba to me. Even some of my friends, they, they speak Yoruba to me. So I'm still in touch with my roots. You get it. Even sometimes, if I say maybe I'm correcting a child <laughs> or someone younger than me, I correct in my language. So a lot of quite a number of people felt i might have forgotten how to speak here but i'm like ah is it that easy to forget no it's not that easy but i'm grateful that at least i'm still in touch with my roots even here in ghana so 
even some people I meet who speak Yoruba, I'm really happy. I'm willing to always speak their Yoruba anywhere, anytime. Then, hey, you guys, my people, my family members, friends, associates, everybody just kept commenting on how my tongue has changed. I tried my best <laughs> to speak like the Nigerian that I am, but for some weird reason, it's like the Ghana accents kept coming in here and there. So I will, I'll just make one statement, then they'll start pointing all the Ghanaian-ness of the things I've said, they'll start pointing it out. I mean, as often I'm like, well, you push, leave me alone, no? <laughs> you push, leave me. So yeah, I noticed a lot of people kept pointing um my accent out they're like oh you know have an accent blah 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 so i'm like oh well what shall i do what shall do i just do <laughs> you know so um yeah I, i've missed you know speaking my nigerian english you know speaking the pigeon especially the pigeon even the yoruba before gum the yoruba was not really sweet in my mouth like that like that I understand very well, very, very well, though. Uh -huh. Well, my speaking sort of sounds like I'm not Yoruba, but I mean, I get by. I, I speak it well, but it's just the accent that sometimes is as if I'm adding. Some people will so it's mistake me for an Igbo girl because of my face. Some people think I'm Igbo. So by the time I speak, they are surprised that, ah, this girl, yeah, Yoruba. I'm like, yeah, what do you think? What do I look like? <laughs> So one more thing I noticed, this one doesn't, it's not exclusive to Nigeria or Ghana, but I've come to realize that quite a number of people do not know that Nigeria and Ghana do not share the same border. We're not even close at all. Geographically, we're not, we're not even close. There are like two countries between these countries. There's um, Togo and I think there's um, Benin between these two countries. So sometimes when people make comments like, Oh, they, they make comments like they're implying like Nigeria Nigeria shares the same border with Ghana. We don't share the same border. Like, I just need to put this out there. Because, I mean, this channel is about sharing information. In fact, someone was even saying that. Maybe it's because we're always together. Nigeria, Ghana, any small thing, Nigeria, Ghana. Any, someone actually told me that, which I think is true. No offense to my other African countries. I'm sorry, but it's what they said. Someone was saying that if you mention Africa without mentioning Nigeria and or Ghana in the conversation, then the conversation might not be sweet, <laughs> to be honest, because it just seems like Af Ghana and Nigeria are the countries putting Africa on the map, sort of, if you get me. Not even all the banter on social media, no, no, no. But for some reason, even in sports, um, academics, different things, Nigeria and Ghana are always on the map. Do you get it? Nigeria and or Ghana, right, are always on the map. For those of you who haven't traveled to Nigeria before, who haven't left Ghana, and for Nigerians who haven't left Nigeria, Ghana and Nigeria do not do not share the same border, okay? They are not so far apart, but they do not share. At least there are two countries, two whole countries between these two countries. So yeah, I just thought to mention that. Anyway, it was nice having this conversation with you guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed my Nigerian vlog so far. For those of uh, my Lagos vlog so far, see, for those of you who are not subscribed, who just watch and go, for those of you who watch and skip ads, God is really watching you. Hmm. God is watching you and it's not a nice thing to do to people. Okay? So if you want me to be earning some small dolls so I can be putting up content for you, going to places and all, please watch my ads. Please subscribe. Please share my videos. Show some love. Tell me that you like my content by liking it, by sharing it, by subscribing, by commenting. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!